Welcome back to another Abs Daily News with your hockey coach guru, Coach Frenchy. Episode number 57. First of all, happy Independence Day in USA, July 4th. Today, guys, buck it up because it's the week of the NHL draft. I have a lot of things to talk about all week, so don't go nowhere. And let's start right away. Episode 57, Petrie versus McDonough. The value now, the Jeff Petrie. The Ab Montreal Canadian Jake Allen scenario. The Montreal Canadian used meet the media with Le Cavalier at 2 o'clock. NHL draft, Fedonov, impact for the Russian players. The NHL draft, still players. I'm going to give you plus. Maybe we're going to have some steal from different team. Let's dive in. First of all, Listen, guys, the Montreal Canadian, the situation with Jeff Petrie, we know it's possible to get straight at some point by the can use a Jeff Gordon because the salary he bring on the table. Everybody now in Montreal's, oh my God, they trade Rand McDonald, the Tampa Bay got nothing in return. Now Jeff Petrie will be the same situation. It's not the same situation. I'm going to give you guys a couple of information why it's not the same. Let's talk about this one there. First of all, Petri is a right defenseman. McDonough is a left defenseman. Advantage Petri. The Petri salary, less money, about $700,000. Advantage Petri. Petri have one year shorter at the contract of McDonough. Advantage Petri. The stat are almost the same when you compare on this board. You can see now between McDonough and Petri last year on 27-26 points. I understand, but look the impact of Petri. Under Ducharme, 6 points in 38 games. Under Martin Saint, we 21 points in 30 games. It's happened sometimes during his career, you get 30-40 games, it does not work. It's happening to Jeff Petri. He's still a solid defenseman, right defenseman at his age, 6'3". Guys, Petri did not lose value. Let's move on to the next graphic. Here's my thinking about this. For me, the value of Jeff Petri is exactly the same. So what is his value? Late first round pick, I think you can get with Jeff Petri. You can also get a national prospect B and return with Jeff Petri. It's not a dumping salary cap for the Montreal Canadiens. They don't have to trade Jeff Petri. They will wait until they get what they're looking for. If it's necessary, they will do it. They don't make a deal for just because of money situation, sorry, cap. So expect him if he's traded, Montreal gets something good in return. Secondly, they could holding him until the trade deadline. I don't see any problem there. The team are looking to add a right defenseman in NHL at that moment is the Detroit. The Dallas Star, this is the team I'm looking for. You have also an eating overall pick first round this year. And the Flyers, Philadelphia, tried to make some impact with the new coach, Tortorella. And the situation with Ron Ellis not looking good for next year. Philadelphia could be another team where they may be trade with a Montreal Canadian. So the value of P3 is still the same. The Jake Allen, yes, the phone ring at the office in Montreal for Jake Allen. The team, many, many teams are looking for goaltender for upcoming year. But the problem with Jake Allen in Montreal, it's all because the carry price. Nobody knows what it will happen to carry price. And the fact you have to wait until August, that push back Montreal to trade Jake Allen. I still believe if carry price return, Montreal Canadiens is going to keep Jake Allen. I don't see him go nowhere at this moment during the offseason. He have a really low salary cap at 2.8. He's a really good backup goaltender at NHL, maybe the top best three backup number two. Here's my thinking about Jake Allen. Keep him until the trade deadline, increasing his value with or without carry price, and make a big trade at the trade deadline. Team are going to begging Montreal to get Jake Allen for the final stretch of the season 22-23. Today at 2 o'clock p.m., the Montreal Canadian have an important press conference with Ken Hughes and Vincent Le Cavalier. And honestly, I tried to read between the lines why. And I cannot figure out. The only thing I can see right now, we know the NHL draft is Thursday, Friday. 
It's a month throughout. They can make some update about this, first of all. If Le Cavalier is this, I expect him to increasing his role inside the Montreal Canadian. Right now, he was only a special advisor with Ken Hughes and Jeff Gordon. I don't see anything else. Is it behind the bench? Is it a stand coach? Is it helping the team? And Martin St. Louis on the ice at the rookie camp, training camp. Is it a staff management become an assistant coach? Is it a guy can become a director, assistant development players? All those possibilities I can see with Vincent Le Cavalier with Montreal Canadien. It's a story we're going to follow up and give you an update tomorrow, guys. Now, let's move on, guys, on the NHL draft. The Fedorov goaltender Russia writes for the Flyers have a real problem right now. The goaltender, 25 years old, a big guy, 6'7", signed contract a couple of months ago with the Flyers. He was supposed to become a backup goaltender for the Flyers for the upcoming year. They have a problem with that. We know they are a special war between Ukraine and Russia. I don't want to go politically go deep with that. And it is what it is. That reminds me, guys, the situation of the initial draft 2022. Remember, when Mogilny left in 1989, that creates some kind of the big conversation and discussion between the KHL and the NHL, and then they have some agreement about the, how they can pick players from KHL, everything like that. Since a couple of months ago, with Ukraine and Russia, everything changed. Fedorov, he was a player for the CSKA, owned by Rasnev. He's a guy have a lot of money, a billion, a billion of dollars. He support Putin behind everything. So what happening now? When Fedorov leave the team at CSKA, the team mad. And now the arrest Fedorov. He has to do a military two years. And it looked like we don't know too much what's going on with him. So they are really concerned about his life over there. What impact has to do with the NHL draft 2022? They have four important players in the draft. You, you have, it could be a first one pick. Miroshenikchenko, it could be a first round pick. Trikasov, it could be a second round pick or third. And then Mitikov, it could be another one first round pick. Because the situation in NHL draft with Russia, I wouldn't be surprised if all four or they go down in NHL. Is something I'm going to follow, guys, Thursday and Montreal. Now, I'm going to give you a list of player guys where they are going to maybe become really surprised at long term and the team pick them. So, must have prospect to set up. Here we go. They are right now late first round or second round early. And I think the team should pay attention to them. Each one of them have some characteristic where they have a problem for the front team. Isaac Howard. His skating is unbelievable, but his undersized but he go to the wall, guy. He's all in. This guy is unbelievable. A two-way player. He's going for the net. He's not scared about anything. Team will love this kid. But again, I would be surprised he's going to be picked between 20 to 26. Roger Maker Harty, USA Team U18 NTDP. Look, his power is unbelievable. His fitness is great. The problem is the skating. Can they develop a skating? Because this kid could become a great bottom six in NHL. And you love those kind of players as the third line, late first round. Lane Hudson, unbelievable defenseman. Problem? Only 5'8". But a guy, he may be the best skater in this draft. He's so shifty, guy is unbelievable. He's a mix of Quinn Hughes and Cal McCall. Come on, coach. I'm telling you right now, that's how he play with a puck. He, he can battle for the corner, but because he's only 5'8", something will be worried about his size. But you talk about take a chance, that's a player you should look. Jenny Neyman, the guy is only 17 years old. When he's going to be draft Thursday, he's only 17. He's a finisher. His size, his physicality is already NHL size, guys. So something's going to wait. I would be not surprised is get out about... 38 to 55, but again, it's a player that should look about this. Ty Nelson, the defenseman, great offensive player mindset. He was the first pick overall in the OHL a couple of years ago. He missed one year and a half because of COVID-19. He maybe regress because of this, but Nelson could be a great asset for many teams. Christian Kiru is maybe 
for me, the biggest player, where the people will let him, don't draft him, but they should pay attention. He's a right defenseman. He's rookie guy at zero point, but the way he's developed in the last 12 months is unbelievable. Great transition players. His vision is great. Passing is good. Kiru could be a great asset for any team. Finally, David Goyet. A lot of people put him 45 to 52. I think it could be a 40. He's a great forward two-way. His skill is great. He has a great IQ a vision. And another player, if you want to take a chance, you should look about David Goyet. Finally, we have to remember three players. Nazar. Some people now put him about 13, 14, 15. Can he drop, uh, go move up to 10? Possible. Matty Chuck, another defenseman. Have to look about him. And one of the guys nobody talk about is Dal Zenkov. Defenseman, 6'6". Six, six, great hockey players. But again, the recent situation could be a problem for them. Finally, I want to finish this today. We have a couple of news around the league happening last Friday. The sorry, cap team. Looking cap overage. What happening? 14 team have to sign, sign in bonus, pay them back. And that affect the following year. The sorry, cap at $82.5 million. Yeah, 14 team right there. The Vancouver Canal at 1.12, Montreal at 1.13, St. Louis 1.1. You can follow all the way that to the capitals at 100,000. So that affects the salary cap, unfortunately, for them. But we're going to hear the NHL schedule is going to be out this week. Here we go, guys. I told you at the beginning, bucking up because we have a lot of news for you. It's going to be like this all week with a lot of great contents for you. And don't forget to click on the like, subscribe to the show. And below this video, please uh, tell me what you think about the episode number 57. And of course, happy Independence Day and have an amazing, great, blessing day, everybody. 